Second of Ranko, where Ranko is conquered. Welcome everyone to yet another video dedicated to some conceptual topics in chemistry and in this particular video we are going to discuss a very important topic of class 12th organic chemistry and that is how to decide whether a set of substrate and reagents will undergo nucleophilic substitution or elimination. And even if we know that it will undergo nucleophilic substitution, then which type of nucleophilic substitution? Mainly SN1 or SN2. Or when it comes to elimination, what type of elimination? Whether E1 or E2. Now this topic becomes very, very important and confusing because as you see, elimination and nucleophilic substitution require the same type of substrates. Same type of substrates ka matlab hai, they both require substrates with a good leaving group. That is the only criteria required. And secondly, the reagents that are used in these reactions, whether we talk about elimination or nucleophilic substitution, they are electron rich reagents. We all know that nucleophilic substitution requires nucleophiles and elimination requires bases. Now, all the nucleophiles are potential bases and all the bases are potential nucleophiles. So it creates a kind of a confusion in the minds of students to decide what type of reaction is going to happen in what type of case. So that confusion will be dealt with in this particular video and you will be much confident and clear about the topic but before going into the topic, I want to warn you. I want to warn you that if you are not very, very much aware of the mechanisms of nucleophilic substitution SN1, SN2, elimination E1 and E2, then this video is strictly not for you. Because here we are not going to discuss the details of the mechanism of SN1, SN2, E1, E2, because that is going to make the video very long. You can definitely go to my other videos where I have discussed nucleophilic substitution and, it, and elimination. So if you are confident of the mechanisms, if you have that uh, awareness of the things going on in the mechanisms of SN1, SN2, E1, E2, then only you should continue. So let us start now. Okay, so as you can see, I have drawn a table over here and in this table, I have divided this table into two parts that is rows and columns. In the rows, I have reagents. In the columns, I have substrates. Now I have divided reagents into four categories. The first category is the reagents which are good nucleophile as well as strong bases. Hydroxide, alkoxide, the conjugate base of terminal alkynes organometallic compounds like organolithium compounds these particular reagents come into this category now moving on to the second category is the good nucleophiles but weak bases you will find these reagents working as excellent nucleophiles no problem with that but when it comes to the basic attack they find themselves in the uncomfortable space actually so uh, these reagents are basically halides cyanides azides as you can see acetates these will definitely not work as bases that much often, but yes, they are excellent nucleophiles. Now the third category, very important category, is good bases, strong bases, but very poor nucleophiles. And in this category, essentially we have sterically hindered reagents, which have bulky groups. Now because of the presence of bulky groups, even if these have good electron cloud over them, it becomes a poor nucleophile and the final category is the kind of last category that is poor base as well as poor nucleophile and in that we have solvents solvents like water alcohol acetic acid these can neither act like strong bases nor good nucleophiles so this is the fourth category and in the substrates column as you can see there is methyl of course there is other primary halides or let us say other primary substrates then there are secondary substrates and finally there are tertiary substrates so we have to know the mechanism of SN1, SN2, E1, E2 in detail before getting into this table, right? So let us move ahead and start with methyl. Now methyl is the simplest case. Why? Because methyl does not have any beta carbon. So there is no question of beta hydrogen. So there is no chance of beta elimination happening over here. So E1, E2 straight away, aap yehi se cut kar sakte hai. To bachta kya hai? SN1 and SN2. Ab jab SN1 ki aap baat karoge, to 
क्योंकि इट कैन नॉट फॉर्म कार्बोकेटाइन मिथाइल कार्बोकेटाइन आर वेरी वेरी अनस्टेबल कार्बोकेटाइन सो द ओनली ऑप्शन लेफ्ट विथ हर्स इज एस एन टू मीन्स इफ दिस मिथाइल सब्सट्रेट इज गोइंग टू रिएक्ट only one thing it can do and it is sn2 so we have good nucleophile strong basis good nucleophile methyl substrate i think sn2 is the best option that is the best thing we can do over here second category good nucleophile weak basis bahut acha hai ye to aur achhi baat ho gayi so yahan par bhi nucleophilic substitution bimolecular badi aasani se ho jayega now the third case is little complicated now your nucleophile is poor but the base is strong now poor nucleophile means sterically hindered it will have its own apprehensions while attacking but since methyl is an excellent substrate it has small hydrogen atoms attached to carbon the steric inhibition or steric hindrance is least therefore this sterically hindered base will also gather courage to attack this substrate and what will happen after attacking yes sn2 for example if we look if we have a third butoxide like sterically hindered base generally it does not act like nucleophile but if we have something like methyl iodide we can definitely expect an attack and obviously attack will happen iodide will go away and we will have this third butyl methyl ether so definitely yahan par kya ho raha hai sn2 ho raha so let us come to the last one and the last category is poor bases as well as poor nucleophiles that are solvents now in this case don't expect methyl to react because methyl cannot undergo sn1 it cannot undergo e1 and these particular reagents are not going to attack it since they are weak so expect no reaction over here even if some reaction will happen the pace of that reaction will be unbearably slow so let us move forward and come to the second uh, category that is primary halides or primary substrates right now when it comes to primary substrates other than methyl now they have beta carbon and we have the chances of elimination even e2 also there right so let us move to the first category that is good nucleophile strong bases primary substrate the case is not as easy as we are expecting it but if you expect a one word answer from me i will say sn2 because the basic competition will be between sn2 and e2 right because it is having a strong base and good nucleophile but since the steric hindrance is least or let us say the steric hindrance is least after methyl there will be a dominant tendency to do sn2 although there can be e2 also that depends on what kind of reagent we are using and also what type of temperature we are giving for example if we give higher temperature it will definitely favor e2 over sn2 and at lower temperature you can expect sn2 even if i go into the detail and tell you a very important example if there is something like ethyl iodide let us talk about ethyl iodide and we give it aqueous koh at let us say room temperature not very high temperature do not expect any other reaction other than sn2 simply we will have ethanol over here by sn2 but the same substrate if you try to give it what alcoholic koh with heat now expect elimination to happen that is we can have ethene as our major product so that is why i am telling you this case is not that easy over simply simplification should not be done but since you are expecting a one word answer i told you it will be sn2 now let us move to the second category that is good nucleophile weak bases primary substrates base kuch kar nahi sakta nucleophile ko agar kuch karna hai to wo sn2 karega aur hindrance utna hai nahi so obviously sn2 will win now let us come to poor nucleophiles and strong bases now nucleophile is not willing to attack so what will happen base will have to attack and if when base attacks what happens e2 now the final one poor nucleophile weak base now here methyl will have to undergo you know heterolytic bond fusion and form carbocation that means there will be a competition between sn1 and e1 we all know that these two reactions happen simultaneously it is not the case that one will happen the other will not this is not possible so there will be a competition between sn1 and e1 it always happens that competition can only be uh, made 
you know it can be inclined in one direction by increasing the temperature maybe if you increase the temperature elimination e1 will dominate if you decrease the temperature sn1 will dominate so that is the only way to get out of this competition okay so let us move to the second category and that is a secondary halide or let us say secondary substrate when we talk about secondary substrate you have good nucleophile strong base now nucleophile will be little bit uh, not interested in attacking since there are two bulky groups so i think here the advantage has to be given to the base so i will say e2 but again i'm warning you there could be sn2 depending on the specific reagent or let us say the temperature conditions now let us come uh, below we have good nucleophile weak base now base cannot attack so nucleophile will, will will have to attack this and we will get sn2 product over here now let us come to the third category here the nucleophile is poor but the base is strong now it is an ideal condition for e2 elimination to happen so again e2 will happen over here and in the final category when we have poor nucleophile and weak base now there is a competition between sn1 as well as sn sorry e1 so definitely the temperature uh, can only decide which type of reaction will happen but in general i will say there will be a competition between sn1 and e1 so this is the case for secondary substrate now let us come to the third one the last one i will say tertiary halides or tertiary substrates now tertiary substrates have a special thing that they are not going to undergo sn2 in any case the steric hindrance these bulky groups are so much there they have so much of influence that do not expect any sn2 to happen over here so even if you give good nucleophile and strong bases instead of doing sn2 it will definitely do e2 and as you know tertiary substrates are most reactive when it comes to e2 now if we have good nucleophile and weak base this is a very complicated case what if my base is weak and nucleophile is willing to attack but tertiary substrate is not going to allow any attack in that particular moment so what will happen i'll just explain you through a very important example now what can happen is let us take an example of tertiary alcohol and we give it hbr the first thing going to happen is it will undergo protonation and we will have something like this so now it has a good leaving group very much capable of doing elimination as well as nucleophilic substitution and we have a decent uh, i will say nucleophile bromide so what will happen that bromide cannot attack because of these bulky groups so it will definitely undergo heterolytic bond fission and we will have this particular carbocation now once this carbocation is being formed now bromide is more than interested in going there and forming tertiary butyl bromide so again as you can see the type of reaction happening here is nothing but sn1 means it will wait nucleophile will wait ki once it undergoes that heterolytic fission carbocation is formed then i am comfortable in attacking the substrate and sn1 will happen so another very important case i will star mark it quite confusing now let us come to the final one not the final actually the penultimate one poor nucleophile strong bases exposed uh, the, the tertiary halide is exposed to poor nucleophile but strong bases so the only option left here is e2 the judgment is quite simple and when it will be left in poor nucleophiles weak bases like water alcohol acetic acid then it will have only two options that will occur simultaneously sn1 and e1 but again temperature will be an important factor higher temperature e1 dominates lower temperature sn1 dominates so we have to be very very careful so this table is going to help you to a great extent but i do not claim it to be the final answer to all your questions for final answer you will have to have that detailed depth in your concepts as well as you should have practiced a lot of cases so that you are now aware of what happens in what kind of a cases so that will be something that is indispensable that is practice but at the same time this table can just show you the path it can show you the light through which you can develop your thought process around these type of problems so i hope you like this video and if you liked it then please uh, uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, thank you thank you everyone